Hi everyone, Reverend Nikki here. Hope you're all keeping well. Long time no see and wish I could be with you today. We're looking at our harvest at the moment and in your school classrooms hopefully you'll be looking at harvest too. We've been watching the tractors going by and the harvest being gathered in and the fields being prepared for next year's harvest. So there's been lots going on in the area and hopefully you've seen some of the tractors working. We also have to think about other types of harvest at this time so we think about the, the fishermen and we think about factories and industry and we think about shops and the supermarkets. So there's lots of harvest industry going on all through the year. So I do pray that you are aware of the harvest and that it's very important that we share and share with one another and with those less fortunate than ourselves. So if that means that you've got some spare food in your cupboards at home, perhaps you can make up a parcel and get it to your local food bank in Tamworth. Or maybe you can see a neighbour that's struggling and you can take some food round to them. Whichever way, I do pray that sharing is a part of what you see and what you feel and what you understand about the harvest that we receive and the harvest that we receive from God. The picture story of the rich fool. Then Jesus told them a picture story saying, the fields of a rich man gave much grain. The rich man thought to himself, what will I do? I have no place to put the grain. Then he said, I know what I will do. I will take down my grain building and will build a bigger one. And I will put all my grain and other things I own into it. And I will say to my soul, so you have many good things put away in your building. It will be all you need for many years to come. Now rest, eat and drink and have lots of fun. But God said to him, You fool! Tonight your soul will be taken from you. Then who will have all the things you have to put away? It's the same with the man who puts away riches for himself and does not have the riches of God. It's great to uh, welcome you to our harvest service. It's a sharp judgment in the parable. You know, it's a story on the surface of a successful farmer. And Jesus hearers, no doubt, would have envied the man's success, admired his good business sense. But there's a trap sprung, isn't there? Verse 20. There's another dimension entirely to life which neither the farmer nor Jesus' hearers have taken into account. There's a play on words that takes place and we lose something of that in the translation. The man speaks complacently to himself. But it is that very self that will be demanded from him. Even his own self is not actually his own. He thought the things in front of him were his. But even his very self, for me, myself and I, that wasn't really his to keep. But God's. And when it is demanded of him, the term that is used is one um, likened to that of collecting alone. Has life been thought of perhaps as being on loan to him, something that he had stewardship over, and it is being collected. There's a tap at the door of the bed. I've come to take what's mine. This is how it will be for whoever stores up things for themselves, but are not rich towards God. 
the parable is not teaching that provision should not be made for the future as we've said that's important you know just uh, next weekend I think on the 11th of October it's National Homelessness Day where it is brought into focus that we need to remember those out on the streets as the nights draw in those who have no shelters let alone produce to store who aren't able to eat and drink and be merry and to relax our thoughts will be with them the message that we take home from this parable is that our relationship with God it must take precedence over over our own selfish concerns the story with the message focuses on the farmer's thoughts the thoughts he has about himself about his future and it's not it's no accident that we have the emphasis and all the repeating of the I and my the advice that he gives to himself to enjoy life rather than use his wealth more constructively to share it we need to be reminded that we are ourselves stewards of the things that God has given us, of God's bounty, but also of our very selves. Do you think about that? It's on loan to us. It's going to be collected one day. We're not to see ourselves as outright owners of our wealth even. But we are accountable to God for how we use it. How are you using yours? Is there anything that you might like to do or to change? And how you see the things that you have stewardship of? There's a sharp challenge in this parable for each of us, me included. So we enter now our time of confession as we think about our place in the world and how we have used God's bounty a time particularly poignant as we think that next weekend we'll be thinking about national homelessness on October the 10th as it gets colder, as the nights draw in, those who are without shelters. We confess to you, O oh God, our lack of care for the world that you have given us. Lord, have mercy. We confess to you our selfishness in not sharing the earth's bounty fairly. Christ, have mercy. We confess to you our failure to protect resources for others. Lord, have mercy. We are truly sorry for the way that we have treated the world and other people. So God is good to hear us and to forgive us and give us a fresh start. May God, who loved the world so much that he sent his Son to be our Saviour, forgive us our sins, make us holy to serve him in the world, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
May God the Father, who fed his children with bread and honey in the wilderness, strengthen you in your pilgrimage to the promised land. May God the Son, who gave his flesh for food and his blood for drink, keep you in eternal life and raise you up on the last day, just as Paul was looking for. May God the Holy Spirit, who leads us into all truth, help you to discern the Lord's body and empower you to proclaim his death until he comes. The blessing of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit rest upon you now and remain with you always. Amen. And on that note, I pray that the light of Christ will be with you and each one of you and each one of your families, and that the light of Christ will see us through this darkness and bring us once more into the light. God bless you all. Look forward to seeing you soon. Take care. Bye.